Hey kids, welcome to another epic series of Let's Learn Android. In today's class, I'm going to be giving you three values, 115,000 times, 2,000 gallons and 60,000 miles and you will link into the beautiful organ that we're going to be talking about, nothing but the human heart. Yes, you got it right. The beautiful human heart beats 115,000 times every single day pumping 2,000 gallons of blood across blood vessels spread over 60,000 miles. Isn't that phenomenal for a beautiful organ that we're going to be studying in today's class? Located right in the center of the human body, in the chest, and not more than the size of a closed clenched fist, but with enormous, enormous power is the human heart. It needs to be really well protected for the beauty that it is. To protect it, we have the breastbone, which is right in the front. At the back, it is protected by the backbone. And from the side, it has an armor, which is made of the ribs. So well protected in the center of the human body, which is referred to as the media steinum. That means the space which owns or which is there where the heart is. The apex of the heart or the tip of the heart is shifted slightly towards the left side, making a little cardiac notch on the left lung. Isn't it amazing and beautiful? Moving ahead, my dear kids, because we need the heart to be right there in the center of the chest and not move from its place, we need to cover and protect it well. It has the coverings called the pericardium. Peri means around, cardio means the heart. There are three layers of the pericardium. The outermost layer is referred to as the fibrous pericardium. It is fibrous and protective, holds the heart tightly in its place. The middle one is called the parietal pericardium and the innermost which is touching the covering of the heart is referred to as the visceral which means hollow internal organ or the visceral pericardium. Between the pericardial membranes is the pericardial fluid which does not allow heat to be generated by the regular dig 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 or functioning of the heart and this pericardial fluid decreases heat generation by friction. Moving ahead, my dear kids, the wall of the heart is the myocardium. The myocardium is a muscle of the heart which never ever rests right from the time you started to beat your heart when you were in your mother's womb till the time we leave this beautiful earth. The myocardium or the muscle of the heart never has to get fatigued and never has to die. And therefore, it is having a beautiful phenomenon of intercalated disc which is not found in any other muscle of the human body, only in the cardiovascular system, which continuously supplies it with oxygen and energy so that the human heart can never undergo any amount of fatigue. Talking about the blood vessels of the heart. Before we actually move on to the blood vessels of the heart, I want to talk about two major forms of blood vessels, which are the arteries and the veins which meet together in the capillary region. The thick blood vessels, which have a very thick muscular coat, are referred to as the arteries. Why should they be thick? They are thick because they're taking their origin directly from the heart, allowing them to beat, allowing them to handle blood with high pressure and therefore their vessel wall has to be thick so that they can expand under the pressure of the heart. If you're talking about heartbeat, it is natural that in the arteries itself, we will be able to feel the pulse. The arteries break down into the arterioles, which break down further into the capillaries, which supply the blood and the oxygen to the tissues, turning back into venules, which join back to form the veins. The veins carry deoxygenated blood and from major parts of the body, they carry deoxygenated blood and die or against gravity and therefore one major difference between the arteries and veins is the presence of valves in the veins which will prevent any backward flow of blood because the heart is sitting on top of the arteries which is pumping with a lot of pressure there can be no backflow which happens in the arteries but because the veins are bringing them back from gravity there could be a flow right back into the tissues therefore we do have veins Anything which takes the blood away from the heart is called the arteries. Towards the heart is called the veins. Let us now come to the chambers of the heart and then we will move on to the flow of blood and the valves of the heart. 
the heart in human beings is completely four chambered. It started from the crocodile because the reptiles have a three chambered heart. Crocodile being an exception has a four chambered heart and humans and birds have a completely four chambered heart. Completely four I mean the right and the left is completely separate. The right side of the heart carries deoxygenated blood whereas the left side of the heart is known for carrying oxygenated blood. The right atrium receives deoxygenated blood from the superior and the inferior vena cava and also from the blood vessels of the heart. The right atrium fills with blood and then on the right side we have the tricuspid valve which is between the atria and the ventricles. When the atria is full of blood, these tricuspid valves open and the blood moves from the atria down into the ventricles. This is the right ventricle that we are talking about which has received deoxygenated blood from the right auricle. From the right ventricle, another exception called the pulmonary artery. Because it is away from the heart, it is artery, but unlike other arteries, it is carrying deoxygenated blood from the heart into the lungs. The lungs by inhalation receive high pressure of oxygen and the blood which is coming has low oxygen and high CO2. So therefore, exchange of gases takes place. Oxygen moves in and CO2 moves out and the blood now gathers this oxygen and becomes the deoxygenated to the oxygenated blood. This oxygenated blood is carried by two pairs of pulmonary veins. One more exception because the veins usually carry deoxygenated blood. But two pairs or four pulmonary veins carrying oxygenated blood reach the left atrium and finally push the blood down into the left ventricle which is one of the biggest and the most muscular chamber of the heart and from there arises the aorta and the first branches of the aorta are the coronary arteries which are going to be supplying the musculature of the heart. This aorta which is one of the thickest blood vessels in the human body is going to carry the beautiful oxygenated blood to various parts of the body and complete the entire circulatory system again. So right auricle to right ventricle to pulmonary artery, pulmonary artery to lungs to pulmonary veins to left auricle, left ventricle and the aorta completes the chambers of the heart and the flow of blood of the heart. Between the right atrium and the right ventricle, you have the tricuspid valve. Between the left atrium and the left ventricle, you have the bicuspid valve. The valves of the pulmonary artery, which is carrying the deoxygenated blood to the lungs, is a semilunar valve. Whereas also the valve of the aorta, which carries the oxygenated blood to the entire human body, is also a semilunar valve. This completes the entire circulatory pathway and flow of the blood along with the valvular information on the human heart. Due to some diseases sometimes the first branch which arises out of the aorta which is nothing but the coronary artery because of hypercholesteremia or due to some other diseases it might get blocked because of increased amount of fatty acids or increased amount of cholesterol leading to a heart blockage for which we might have to do something as invasive as angioplasty but that is for another lecture. This beautiful lecture on the entire circulatory pathway starting from how many times it beats to the end gets over. Hope you enjoyed it. The beautiful human art completely explained to you and I will see you very very soon with another amazing episode of Let's Draw It and Learn It. Till then, take care. Bye.